In today's video, I want to talk about the Atelier Mysterious DX Trilogy, a series of JRPGs available for the Switch, PS4 and Steam. A huge thank you to Koei Tecmo Europe for giving me review codes for these games. I'll be going into what makes them stand out against the other Atelier trilogies and RPGs in general, the unique selling point and concept of each game in the trilogy, and why it's worth playing, and I'll pepper in my own personal thoughts on the trilogy, which game is my personal favourite, and certain elements which were real standouts for me, some of which are missing in later games. If you're interested in the music of the series, please definitely check out my bonus soundtrack review. Each Gust series is so sonically unique and interesting, so this trilogy needed its own video. Hopefully see you there soon. So what is Atelier? First of all, you might be wondering what the heck Atelier even is, and what kind of game it is. Atelier derives from the French word for workshop, atelier, and it's a long-running JRPG series surrounding alchemy. The series has always been known for its cute, light-hearted characters, and almost always features a cute female alchemist as the protagonist, with a lively supporting cast. It stands out against other RPGs because until very recently, it was never about saving the world or achieving some kind of otherworldly incredible feat, but more focused on everyday character interactions and growth. Personal goals, friends and family, a goal and a reason to get up in the morning. The small things in life. If you're looking for a narrative that's complex, action-packed and earth-shattering, you've probably come to the wrong place. It's a refreshing departure from the angst found in most RPGs. As I mentioned, the soundtrack in Atelier games, especially since the Dusk trilogy, has always kept me extremely interested too. Please check out my videos on the Dusk trilogy too if you're interested. Okay, now let's dive into the first main topic. What makes the Mysterious DX trilogy stand out against the other Atelier trilogies? The Mysterious trilogy is slightly hard to summarise and describe compared to, say, the Arland or Dusk trilogies. It came at a time when Gust was clearly trying a Back to Basics reboot for the series, with a brand new producer. Aesthetically, of course, it's still full of beautiful and flowing hand-drawn art and detailed 3D character models to match. It has a more neutral colour palette than the pink, sweet vibe of Arland, but also more intensely bright and colourful than Dusk. Mysterious DX is quite loud and saturated, especially the latter two games, they aren't afraid of embracing the player's inner child, which is refreshing compared to the muted, mature approach most RPGs take. There's definitely a strong European influence in the designs and architecture. Just to be completely honest, it does feel like a bit of a mishmash to me, but not necessarily in a bad way. There were two different collaborating character designers, Yugen and Noko. In a way, it kind of works because neither style is overwhelming enough for it to be jarring. The art style and gameplay all feels like a testing ground rife with experimentation. Again, comparing to the Arland or Dusk trilogy, there's slightly less cohesion in an artistic sense. However, each of the games has very unique elements that makes them 100% worth playing. This trilogy actually has things that have never been done before in the series, and some that I wish they would try again. Furious in particular is revolutionary in so many ways, but more of that later. What I love about Mysterious is its focus on characters and slice of life. A coming of age theme is prevalent throughout the games too. It never stays serious for long, if ever. The game feels lighthearted, relaxing and wholesome, and sometimes the major story goals feel secondary to the bonds you make with the characters, along with the exploration and alchemy. Speaking of alchemy, or item creation, in layman's terms, the alchemy system was a real reboot too. They made it a lot more visual and easy to pick up, in my opinion. Items in a recipe are represented as squares in a grid, kind of like a puzzle. The arrangement and order you place the items changes the overall effects on the end product. It slowly gets more and more complex, but I think the core system is super easy to pick up. I would absolutely recommend the Mysterious Trilogy for complete newcomers to the series who might not want to be overwhelmed. Let's jump over to the next main point. 
the unique selling point of each game in the trilogy, and why the trilogy as a whole is worth playing. Atelier Sophie is the first game in the trilogy. The main character is Sophie, who finds a mysterious book in her workshop. She quickly finds out the book can talk and is shrouded in mystery. Let's start with the not so amazing points so we can get them out of the way. This game is Atelier back to basics in several ways. Conceptually, it's extremely simple. The cast is small, the gameplay variety is fairly low compared to other games in the series, the graphics are very bare bones, and the gathering areas are cramped and samey. However, let's move on to the good things. I absolutely love the concept of a mysterious talking book and the two main characters of this game. Sophie is upbeat and bubbly without being annoying. She's easily the best protagonist of the three games. Her slow, unravelling relationship with Plakta, the mysterious book, is cute and satisfying, and so is uncovering Plakta's memories. The supporting cast is pretty charming, but coming to this game from the Dusk trilogy, they're all quite normal and more rooted in reality. This is fine because there's a greater emphasis on Sophie and Plakta themselves, and I really liked both of them. I enjoyed slowly learning more about each supporting character's hidden depths too. I kind of liked that there was an overweight character, for once, who was the butt of jokes at times, but also an important friend to Sophie. Now, let's move on to my beloved Atelier Ferris DX. Okay, damn, I just love this game so much. It was such a shocking surprise after Sophie, and such a bold twist. The game involves a young protagonist called Ferris, who was born and raised in a completely closed off mining town. Apart from a select few hunters and merchants, no ordinary civilian is allowed in or out. Naturally, Ferris is passionate about wanting to see the outside world, and this inspires her lust for adventure. To date, it's the only semi-open world atelier with huge, sprawling, interconnected areas. The tagline of the game is the mysterious journey, and the game really does what it says on the tin. It truly feels like an adventure, a lot more so than Sophie. This is partly due to the portable atelier. This was such a novel idea and one I really miss in later games. You can choose to set down your campfire and portable atelier at several points throughout the world, and use it as your new base of operations. From here, you can easily gather new materials, complete quests, and even uncover hidden new towns and villages. It's the only atelier I can think of with several hub towns and cities, as well as various smaller towns where you can find new characters and quests. The exploration was so addictive and completely different from the cramped basic areas in Sophie. Some areas are slightly sparse, and it feels quite rough around the edges, I'm not gonna lie. But I didn't mind this because I was having a lot of fun. Almost everything revolves around gathering and synthesizing items, and these core elements were extremely fun and addictive to me. The combat is... there, and definitely not bad, but a fairly standard turn-based affair. There are random support skills that activate depending on the characters in your party. A lot of that seems automated though, and isn't really explained very well, which is a little frustrating. But combat was always kind of in the background for me. Going back to gathering. This is the first Atelier game that actually introduced a variety of visually unique gathering points. It sounds simple, but it was a real turning point, and paved the way for all subsequent games. For example, if you see one type of huge stone, and use a particular item to smash it, you can guess what kind of item you'll be getting. This made gathering more natural and logic-based, and less randomised like in previous games. I could honestly go on forever, but basically I highly, highly recommend Ferris. If you can only afford one game in the Mysterious DX trilogy, I would personally start with Ferris. Or perhaps if the open world element isn't appealing to you, try the last game in the trilogy, Liddy and Suelle. That being said, let's jump on over to the third and final game, Atelier Liddy and Suelle, The Alchemists and the Mysterious Paintings. 
This game features the two little girl protagonists, Liddy and Swell, probably the youngest protagonists to date. To be honest, they didn't gel with me very well, but I see the direction that Gust was trying to go in with the whole youthful coming of age storyline about family. The game itself is beautiful and the most colourful and vibrant of the three. It has an amazingly unique selling point. The fact that you can jump into different paintings, each with their own beautiful world to explore. There's a spooky Halloween world, a fiery volcano world, an ethereal flower world. Each one is visually distinct. It's no longer an open world game like Furious, which bummed me out slightly, but the areas are definitely large enough to be interesting. There's a notice board full of quests, several main story goals, and lots of painting worlds to explore. Lydia and Sowell is no doubt the best graphically, and the easiest on the eyes. What I liked about Lydia and Sowell the most, which is quite rare for an Atelier game, is that you actually got to see the protagonists from the previous two games age and mature a little bit. It was so satisfying seeing all the characters come together in a much larger cast. Honestly, Lydia and Sowell themselves felt the least interesting to me, but the development that Sophie and Furus get is great to see. If you are wondering about time limits, and the thought of a time limit gives you anxiety, don't worry too much. Sophie has no time limit whatsoever and no missable trophies either, so you're free to synthesize, battle and explore to your heart's content. There's no new game plus, but there is a way to keep playing and complete any character events that you missed. Atelier Furious does have a time limit for a significant part of the game, albeit a very lenient one. If you've played Arland or the first two Dusk games, this one genuinely feels like it isn't even there. Basically, Furious has to get enough letters of recommendation in the long time limit before she passes a certain exam. Once you pass and get this license, your time limit disappears and you're absolutely free to explore and uncover the rest of the world at your own pace. There's still lots of stuff left to do at this point. I never felt that the time limit pressured me or inhibited my fun at all, but of course your mileage may vary. Lydia and Sowell, again, goes back to having no time limits, apart from for one very small quest in the game, and you can make a separate save just in case. If time limits are really a deal breaker for you, perhaps avoid Furious, but you'd be missing out on one of the most unique and innovative Atelier games if you do. Also, with these DX versions of the game, most of, if not all the DLC, is bundled into the base game. There are new additions exclusive to DX2. I would say none of them are vitally important, but do add a few interesting things. Sophie DX gets an additional small story chapter with some development and a new costume. Furious DX gets four new novelty vehicles, which let you travel around the world quicker and easier. Quite a cool and useful addition. It's worth noting that Furious, even the original version, had some DLC playable characters which are now included in the DX version. Lydia and Sowell DX gets arguably the biggest exclusive edition. An additional story chapter with Nelky? Nelk? Nelk from the spin-off game Nelk and the Legendary Alchemists. They travel to Nelk's world through a painting, which was a cute idea. It's worth noting that I was playing on Switch. At the time of making this video, each game runs perfectly fine on Switch in both handheld and docked mode. They fix quite a few graphical issues with the patches, which make these pretty visually decent. Considering you can play them portably now, the PS4 versions have trophies of course, so pick your preferred poison. Each DX game comes with its own digital art book. There's a soundtrack sampler that you can play in the background while you do this. I'll talk about this more in my soundtrack review video. In conclusion, I love Atelier. And while the mysterious DX trilogy isn't my all-time favourite, each game is unique, addictive and worth playing for different reasons. Sophie DX is relaxing, character-focused and a great entry point for newcomers to the series. Furious DX, my personal favourite, is the closest we've gotten to an open-world Atelier. It emphasises exploration and adventure, is the most addictive of the three by far, and tries so many new things that drove the series forward to what it is today. Lydia and Sowell DX is the best in terms of graphics and visuals, with several stunningly vibrant painting worlds to explore. 
you get to see the culmination and growth of the previous main characters. All three DX games have exclusive editions and bundled DLC that arguably make them worth rebuying, even if you played the originals. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have more time to kill, please check out my Mysterious DX soundtrack review and my videos on the Dusk DX trilogy. Thanks for watching.